Abby. I'm Greg, and all together now, <laughs> we, we are live. Lovely mini Rex rabbits. How are we all doing? We good? <laughs> what's this one's name? So this one here is called Hello. And what's this one's name? Uh, Greg. Sorry, sorry, what's your name? Greg. Greg. Oh, the rabbit's also called Greg. The Hello. rabbit is also called Greg. <laughs> I think Greg oh wants to go for a wonder God. already. Yes, this um, is so super cute. <laughs> so today we are live from a... Oh, yes, we are. This summer we are getting out and about. Uh, we are bringing you Saturday morning shows that are packed with fun, facts, quizzes, activities. But today we also have lots of lovely farmyard friends, just like these two. If you think these two are cute, just wait till the end of the show because we are going to be introducing you to a duckling. But that little duckling doesn't yet have a name. No, it's an anonymous duckling. Yeah, so we so, want to... Yeah, we think it'd be lovely for you to name the anonymous duckling. Yes, so towards the end of the show, we are going to invite you to write the names that were your, your favourite choice of name for the duckling in the live chat. Uh, but we'll let you know when to do that. It'll be yes. towards the end of the show. But yes. have a think now. What do you think we should name the duckling? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so we are at South Angle Farm Park, yes. uh, and we are joined by uh, the owner. Yes. We're gonna we're gonna say hello. Here we go. Here is say Farmer David. Hello. <laughs> so David is with us to make sure that uh, the animals are happy and that we're feeding them right. Yeah. Um, and it is time for their second breakfast. It is. It is. So should we? Should we start moving? All right then. So let's make a move. Thank you so much, Farmer David, who's helping us with our moving moving studio today, which is on a trailer. And um, our first stop, actually, we're going to drop the rabbits off, Philo and Greg. Um, you might notice just behind us here, I don't know if you can see it, but this enclosure is right, actually um, <laughs> is actually a train. But here we have a pirate ship, and so we're actually going to drop our, uh, the rabbits off at the pirate ship this morning. When we're going to say hello to some of you in the live chat. How's Greg doing? Greg's very happy oh, in I'm there. Drop the pirate rabbit off. Oh, and now we can speak a bit louder because it's nice and windy here. Oh, we're so excited about today's show. It's so great to have you with us. So um, let's say a quick hello to some of you who are in the live chat. Yes. Who we got uh, we've got Neve in Adelaide. Oh, wow. We have Eliza from Hong Kong. Uh, we have Malachi and Zachariah uh, we from have, Deal. Uh, Olivia and Jacob in Peterborough. We have Mia in Harrogate. Hello, Mia. Who says, happy Yorkshire Day. <laughs> uh, we also have Lexi and Joel in Leicester. Uh, Richard says, hi, David. Lots of people saying hello to Farmer David as well. Aren't you a lovely <laughs> awesome. bunch? Uh, Kyra and Anjali on YouTube have sent us all the farm emojis. Wow. Well, um, Adam in North Wales. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's have a quick look on Facebook. So many of you watching on Facebook. Uh, Lucy and Peter in Cambridge. It's just down the road. We have Harry and Emily in Nottingham. James and Thomas in Southampton. We have Albert and Cecily as well. You have to excuse us. We're looking quite close to the screen. It's so bright. It's we so can bright. barely see what we're doing. So Hello. There we go. We'll do some more hellos at the end of the show yeah. as well. All, All right. right. So, so we did say it's, uh, it's, it's breakfast time at the farm. So let's go and meet our first character. What do you reckon? Let's do it. Okay. So we're going to head down into the woods now where it's going to be a little bit shadier. But we should say that South Angle Farm Park is a family run business. Um, and here they, well, they have lots of um, rehab homed and rescue animals. But you know what, David, I'm going to stop you just here, actually. Should we, should we go hands-free? I think we, free? Should change, we should change the yeah. camera a little bit. Oh, so with that, a bit I'm going to find today. some light. There we go. Right, we're going to go hands-free. So Maddie's going to switch us to the uh, to the camera. While you do that, Maz, I'll switch us to this cam. Morning, everyone. Morning, morning. Always a bit nervous when we start because I never know whether it's actually going to work going live to YouTube and Facebook, but it is. We have lots and lots of you watching, so thank you. And um, this is a, we love this place. It's so great to come and visit because not only can you learn about the animals and the plants as well, they've got some glass houses as well. Okay. And you can have a round out, uh, run around outdoors and of course feed them. Going back to your camera. Richard's up. There we go. Yeah. Now we're hands free. Now we can really talk to you. So as I was saying, there are lots of rehomed and rescued animals here and we're about to meet the first one. So let me give you a bit of a clue. Um, this animal is called Wilbur. Mm -hmm. um, Wilbur, the type of animal Wilbur is, uh, like a human, it's the only other animal that can get sunburnt. Um, these animals can't sweat. Now, Wilbur is already coming over to say hello. You might think of these animals as being quite slow, but they're not. The adults can run up to 11 miles per hour. Wilbur is a pig. Yes. All right, I'll switch. Here you go. Oh, hello. Hello, Wilbur. Oh, so 
Isn't Wilbur so lovely? Um, Wilbur is 14 months old, um, so he's still quite young. You can think of Wilbur a little bit like a toddler, and pigs are incredible animals. They are highly social, um, and they are very, very intelligent. They even dream. Um, something that's pretty cool is that with pigs, in theory, you could teach them tricks that dogs can do. They really are that smart. But we did say it's breakfast, and I have got some pellets here. So let's see if Wilbur wants some food. You're gonna come and say hi. You're gonna come and say hi. Have you come? Have you come? Oh, watch come this. On. This is amazing. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Hello. Hi. Oh, one more time. Let's see your lovely snout. You're gonna jump up for us. Go on. Oh. All right. I'm gonna pop some on the floor for you now, Louise. There you go. Down here. Down here. On the floor. So I'm just gonna give Wilbur a little bit to eat. Okay. A little bit more. Uh, pigs are omnivores, which means they eat pretty much anything. So these pellets have um, got a good mixture of all the, all the right things. <laughs> I'm going to get down on the floor for you. Wilbur is so friendly. I know, so lovely, isn't it? So sweet. When Wilbur first came, let me tell you a bit more about pigs first, actually. So we said that they're omnivores. You know that they can run super fast. Are we going to come down here? All right, then. Here we go. Hello. When Wilbur first arrived here at the farm, um, he was only four months old. Yeah. He was only four months old and was about the size of... <laughs> oh, all right, all right, all right, all right, down here. Right, we've actually got a photo to show you. There you go. We've got a photo to show you of Wilbur when Wilbur was a youngster. So, Greg, if you want to show them on the, on the laptop screen. Yeah, okay, so yeah. here comes Wilbur as a baby. So cute. So there he is, about the size of a baked bean can. And you can see, Wilbur has grown quite a lot already. Is this big? <laughs> Show us a size comparison. There you go. <laughs> That's how big Wilbur was. Well, imagine this with legs and a head and a, oh, and a tail. Um, He's grown so much and Wilbur will actually, keep, well, will actually keep growing for four years. So it could get even bigger and um, will eventually weigh the same as 600 baked bean cans. Hello, mate. Oh, there you go. Do you want to see there a really cute video of Wilbur when he was yes. a little? Yes, so when Wilbur first arrived, he was bottle fed um, and we've got a video of that happening. So why don't you show us? And I will get some lovely food for you here. How cute is that? Oh, amazing. Right, back on you, Mads. All right, so this is Wilbur. I guess we should say as well, as we do have Farmer David with us, do you have any questions at all about Wilbur specifically? So we know, oh, I, I, I love actually the story about how Wilbur was found. Um, so we say that he arrived, we know that he came here about four months old, but actually it was a local family that found Wilbur on the side of the road and they brought him here to South Angle Farm Park because they, they didn't know or they couldn't find any pig farms in the area. So we still don't actually know where Wilbur came from, but he looked out because he is super happy here and has a wonderful wonderful life um, and you can see there's lots of mud and there are wet patches around and I did say just as we were approaching but um, Wilbur uh, is a pig and just like us they can get sunburned so one of the ways they will protect their skin but also keep cool is to wallow in the mud to cover their skin with it so they look dirty but actually they're not they're just protecting themselves and they do all of their business all of their you know oh, what? I need a poo sound effect. Oh, yeah, we can't get to it. Um, in just one area of the enclosure, and then that's, they'll always do it in that space. So actually, they're pretty clean animals as well, which is awesome. Shall we see if we've got any questions about pigs coming in? Yeah. All right then. So you, why don't you like put the camera okay. on you, and then I will make sure. Hello, you lovely lot. Hello, hello. Gosh, there's all the tech challenges today. Right, let's have a look on the laptop. Let's see who I've got. Let's see if we've got any questions coming in. Oh, Edward and Adam have sent us, they, well, they want a fact bomb for this. They say domestic pigs can change the shape of their jaw and skull uh, if allowed to go wild and they will change back if re-domesticated. Is that, is that a fact or is that a question? David says, maybe. <laughs> worthy, of a, worthy of a fact bomb. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, okay, a question here. Darcy would like to know how fast Wilbur can run. Oh, I can tell you that one. Go on then. 
Um, so Wilbur, well, as an adult, Wilbur will be able to run up to 11 miles per hour, which is pretty quick. Um, Wilbur tends to charge over to come and say hello, actually. And it's surprising the pace that, um, that you can get up. That's for sure. So yeah, 11 okay. miles per hour. I've got a great question here as well. Um, somebody said, where has it gone? Uh, how fast can Wilbur run? Uh, no. We've had, yeah, how fast can Wilbur run? That's what he did. Yes. And I just saw another one, which is how big will Wilbur get? Oh, well, I know how big Wilbur can weigh. He will weigh up to, actually, you, knew, you can know the weight, David. Yeah, about uh, 350 kilos. 300 and... 350 kilos. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that's, that's it's a lot of 600 baked bean, cans. baked bean cans. It is indeed, yeah. Wow. A okay. lot. Shall we give him a bit more food? Yeah, a little yeah. bit more food. All right, then, here we go. It's only fair that we give you all of this as you've been such a star. Hey. Absolute oh. star. You're one of our favourites, Wilbur. Oh, mate! <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to put it on the floor. Okay, here we go. Here we they go. are so clever. There we go. You can have all your breakfast. Some of it's gone on your hair, but that's okay. Yeah. Save it for later. <laughs> all right. So, Get back to you. we're actually going to move on a little bit now. We're going to meet our next three uh, characters of the morning. And you might be able to hear them. You maybe have even spotted them. Uh, but I'm going to bring this out so we can see what we're doing. Ah, gosh, that was close, okay, wasn't so it? so clues for our next animals. Yes. Um, they're young, their babies are called kids. In fact, when they give birth, that's called kidding. Well, that, so, that, so that whole like you must be kidding. That means well, something new now. That would mean you're giving birth to one of these. Or oh, a little bit loud. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, I think we should just. Why don't we them. pull it? Actually, no, he's great. This is perfect. Yeah, this is All right perfect. then. So, who do you think we're about to meet now? Who the are we going to see? Is... It's the goats. It's the goats. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Right, I absolutely love the goats. As soon as I get their food down, they're going to start getting very excitable. Um, so we're feeding them something called you nuts, which is a mix of uh, barley and oat and uh, a bit of sunflower oil, all kind of mixed up, perfect for them. Look, looks like this. Uh, and do you just want to go straight in on eating some? Yeah, okay. I think so. This mm -hmm. one's old Ned. Old uh, Ned is lovely. Old Ned is absolutely delightful, but tends to hog the food. Oh, Come on, quick, we've quick. got Sylvie and we have Phoebe oh, right, as well. Okay. So uh, Sylvia and Phoebe are uh, miniature goats. Yeah. They're uh, six years old. Old Ned is a pygmy goat. Uh, 16 years old. I hang think on, hang on, Greg, I'm about sorry. to be joined by some peeking ducks. Hello, everyone. <laughs> sorry, but the ducks have come to join us. I'm not sure what this one is here, but we definitely have two peeking ducks. David, what's this one? This is a Muscovy duck, and here we have two peeking ducks who are fairly new to the farm and feeling quite confident today. That is so wonderful. What else can you tell us about goats? Okay, so if you can see their eyes, can um, you can actually see something really special about their pupils. Yeah. About the, uh, the black bits oh. of their eyes, right? No, Ned, you're so greedy. Let this one have some. I might be able to get Let right Sylvia up to have some. Oh, no, she's you a bit look. more nervous, I'll isn't feed, she? I'll feed Ned. There we go. It's just a bit dark to see it, sadly. Oh, there dear. we go. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, Ned. She's a bit nervous about the camera as well, which is understandable, because it does look a bit odd. All right, Ned. Right, Ned. Okay, look. well, tell us about their eyes anyway. Okay, so their eyes are actually um, rectangles, like rectangular shape. The pupils are. The pupils, yeah, the, the kind of hole in the eye. And the reason for that, look how lovely mm. um, Sylvia's being over here. Mm. I'm going to make sure um, that Phoebe gets some food. Um, so that is so, they can, it's amazing. They can actually see almost all the way around um, like the whole field of vision. So if, if seeing all the way around is 360 degrees, they can see 300, 320. Right. Uh, and that's because of those eyes, because of those long pupils, mm -hmm. means they can see all the way without turning their head. And it's great. <laughs> Ned. Ned is hungry Ned. and doesn't want to share. Right. Ned, come here. <laughs> I'm going to give you a bit of this so that you stop. There we go. Now, you see how um, Ned's eating? Uh -huh. um, Ned's eating directly in, uh, in front. Mm -hmm. And that's what they do. They're called browsers. So they tend to eat what's in front of them and they eat uh, a lot of tree bark and things like that as well. It's a little bit how we go browsing at the shops. We look at eye level, don't we? And we yeah. look at the things that are in front of us. Whereas so some of the animals we see later eat more off the ground and they're called grazers. Yeah. And yeah, so they can pretty much see all the way around um, with those big wide pupils. There's just one little bit at the back, which is great. So if predators are kind of coming at them. Um, it's good for the predators, not for them. <laughs> no, it's great. For, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great for them because like can basically see a predator coming from any direction. 
Um, and as we said here at South Angle Farm Park, all the animals are uh, rescued mm -hmm. or, or unloved. So um, all these three were kind of kind of saved yeah. when they came here. There's so, one other thing I want to show you though. All right, yeah. Ned, Ned, whoa, you are strong. I should say that actually we can see there are lots of trees and also picnic benches at the back of their enclosure. And that's because these three like to climb them. Um, Greg, tell us about that. Oh my goodness. Can I show you this? Yes, please do. So, lots of uh, goats. And actually we were speaking to farmer David. Sorry, I'm and, just gonna- Go just on, yeah, you. go on. Excuse me, that's my shoe. <laughs> right. I think let's head on on, uh, yeah. Farmer Dave. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about more about those goats that I was telling you about. Okay. So there are some goats in Morocco that like to climb trees. Well, lots of goats like to climb trees. That's the thing. Yeah. Lots of goats like to climb trees. Um, and actually, we discovered that these goats that we've just gone past, old Ned and Sylvia and Phoebe, sometimes climb trees, um, which is amazing. Uh, right. And actually, oh. Did you? Did you see? What? Did you see any? No, oh, I, no carry on. I, carry on. I didn't. Didn't see anything. Um, but as we were saying, that there are um, goats in Morocco, which are really good climbers, and we've got a photo of this to show you. Um, they get exceptionally high up argan trees. Can we show it to them now, Greg? Yes, we absolutely can. Uh, so let me just show you a picture of. Oh, hello. Our next friends have found us. <laughs> You'll already be able to hear them. I was going to give you clues, but I don't think you need the, um, the clues as to what they are. Here are the goats in the trees. Here are the climbing goats. Next animals. <laughs> um, maybe we can give you some clues. The female animals are called ewes. The male animals are called rats. All right, all right. Here we go. Here they are. Hello, you four. Hello, you four. Look, aren't they wonderful? Yeah, so lovely. Okay, hey, pass here you go. Over to you. <laughs> right, I'm gonna go get some <laughs> whilst you go to the <laughs> We have Heathcliff, <laughs> Harry, Jane, and Murphy, and they are all <laughs> lambs. Um, we call sheep lambs until they are one year old, and these guys are probably five and a bit months old, I think, so they're still pretty young. Uh, we've got some more you know, so we're going to see all right, I'm coming in. I'm coming in. I'm coming oh, she's going in. I'm going in. All right, come on then, team. Come on, team. There we go. Oh, they're so sweet. You come down here. Come down here. Oh, we're all really hungry. Put some on the floor. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to talk a bit louder, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, they are so sweet. And Greg was saying that the goats are browsers. Well, the sheep are indeed grazers. So they usually will graze off the ground eating grass, but we have got some of these units for them right here. And like the goats as well, they have a really good field of vision, which means that they can see really far around them. And that's because of the position of their eyes. The eyes are basically on the sides of their head. So um, just like Greg was saying, if it means that they get that good vision all the way around and the only place they can't see is directly behind them. Um, here we go. So we said that female sheep are called ewes, male sheep are called rams. <laughs> but tell me in the live chat, do you know what we call a group of sheep? Because sometimes we might call a group of sheep, hello, we might call a group of sheep a flock. Uh, sometimes we will call them a herd, you're herding sheep. Um, but sometimes they're even called a mob. A mob of sheep as well, and oh, I didn't know I didn't, that. I hadn't I heard know that one before. Um, I have to say, their mouths are so soft; they've got really velvety noses. Um, but they don't have teeth like ours. We've got here we go. Oh, we've got teeth on both our, the top and the bottom of our jaws. But the sheep, here you go. The sheep don't. They actually they're missing uh, their top teeth, and instead, <laughs> this one's so playful. I know. Instead, they have bottom teeth that they will sort of like lift upwards and <laughs> down there. <laughs> they're so sweet, aren't they? They're quieter now. They're much, much quieter. Here you go. Right, I'm gonna have to put some on the floor just to keep them busy for a little while. Because I want to talk a little bit about their wool. Um, as you can see, the sheep have really, here you go, there you go. Look, there's loads on the floor now, sweetheart. Um, they have really, really woolly coats. And it's super, super thick. Uh, the wool is amazing. It's fire retardant, which means it doesn't catch fire, but also uh, it's waterproof, which is why sheep will be quite happy out in the fields when it's raining. 
but the thing is with most sheep they don't shed their wool so you know we sort of lose hair we shed hair well that doesn't happen with most sheep so we have to make sure they get sheared um, and that is where their coats their woolly coats are sheared off um, and that happens about once a year uh, we have to wait till they're sheep first so that these these actually have never been sheared before um, because they're not one year old yet these actually these four sheep will stay here on the farm until they're a year and then they'll go to another farm in a nearby town which is where they'll join a much bigger herd so it's actually very important that sheep do get sheared because if they don't their wool will just keep on growing and that's actually not very healthy for the sheep so i wanted to tell you uh, a story about a world record breaking sheep called chris the sheep do you want to see a picture um here is chris <laughs> poor chris so chris is a type of sheep called a merino you might have heard of merino wool um, and he was found out in the wild uh, and we actually think he's well it's thought he probably hasn't been sheared for six years so that's about six years of growth and a, a record-breaking sheep shearer was actually invited to do the job to help chris the sheep out and the the wool that was taken off uh chris's back weighed 40 kilograms so here he is after looking so, much happier and healthier so let me show you before yeah after there you go. before yeah after so there there's a that's chris the record breaking sheep. And I love that um, some of you on Facebook, Vicky's just said, Chris the Cloud, oh, which yes. I think is absolutely lovely. Um, so let's have a look at some of those questions as well. Um, maybe we can chat these at you, Farmer David. So, so why do sheep have to be sheared? Asks Alan in Southampton. Because if you didn't shear them, they would get too hot. It's very hot, it's like wearing a woolly jumper or a big watery, waterproof jacket all year round that overheats. So we have to shear them, but that's the reason we keep sheep, is because they want the wool. Yeah. Actually, most wool, hey, um, most wool, most sheep wool is turned into carpets. And Oh, I think we're back. Are we? We were just talking about, it's just the two of us doing the tech and we don't know if we're live or not. Are we? Are we back? We're back. Oh, well, we're having a lovely Sorry, time. you lot. We're, we are in this wonderful farm park, which is, you know, it's great. It's in the middle of uh, beautiful farms and fields, right? Mm. So uh, the data here is, is not particularly strong. Uh, so I'm using a little um, data dongle. But uh, yeah, normally if this was done, then you would have a lot of those or a truck with a satellite dish. So. Be live, man. Are we? Sorry, everyone. If you are still with us, thank you so much. We are live this morning at South Angle Farm Park, and we are having a wonderful time feeding lots of the animals <laughs> their breakfast. However, our signal streaming situation is intermittent and a little bit dodgy. So if we drop off, we can only apologise. However, we I've have just met our data source. Fantastic. We've just met four lambs. Um, they're still noisy. We have given them lots to eat, but we're moving on now because I've actually got a little craft that we would love you to try at home during the summer holidays. Okay. Are we ready to roll? I will switch. Okay, Farmer David is with us as well. We should definitely say hello. Hi guys. Hello. <laughs> All right, onwards. For those sheep, peck it again. <laughs> Farmer David's going in to save the day. Here we go. Okay, so we're actually going to do something called origami. Uh, and do you know what origami is? So origami is uh, folding paper in fancy ways to make fun shapes, I think is probably the best way to describe it. So I've got a couple of different supplies with me, but the good thing is all you need to make this really, at its simplest is a piece of white paper. That it <laughs> it's over there, Mads. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Oh, it's all going so well. Ooh. Hang on, Greg, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna weigh things down with my baked bean yeah, can. Yeah, use, use a baby Wilbur. A baby Wilbur, okay. We're going to be making an origami sheep bookmark. So that's what we're gonna make today. Uh, and you just need a piece of A4 white paper. And what I'm doing first, Greg, if you can sort of like point down here so we can see what we're doing. I'm just getting our piece of A4 paper and then I'm making a fold here. Move those two out of the way so you can't see them. Here we are. Um, so I'm making one single fold and then I can cut to this piece here and that will give us a square. So that's what we want. We want to end up with a square of paper, just like this one. Here, can we nice. see that? Yep. All right, so now watch these folds. 
Let's fold it up like this. So we've now got a triangle shape and now I'm folding it up and I'm going to take the other corner down here on the left side and I'm going to fold that up as well. You see what we've done there? Yep. So I'm gonna put those back down. And now as this is sort of like a double, sort of like a double sheet now, I'm going to bring just the top triangle down like so. And that sort of made a space here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold these ones back up again and I'm going to tuck them into this little pocket that we have made. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. We are not how giving many, up. How many live videos have we done this morning? Doesn't matter, let's not worry about that. Um, uh, do, do you want to just show where we got to with our origami paper bookmark? So all I've done is I've taken in this edge here and then I folded that over. And now we have a little pocket and we're going to decorate this one to look like a sheep. We just need to round it out a little bit. So make sure you've got a grown up to help you if you're using scissors. And we don't want to cut too much off because we need the folds to hold the shape of the bookmark in place but we just want it to look a little bit more cloud like don't we we want it to look woolly in fact maybe we could make this one really woolly and call it chris the sheep bookmark <laughs> we could do that couldn't we so i'm going to imagine that i have um made sort of like lots of little cuts like that all the way around so it's much fluffier and can we say thank you to stacy who says this is the most legendary episode yet well done for keeping on going <laughs> so now I'm going to show you here's one here's one that we made earlier so this here is how we have decorated it so we've got the bookmark and it just slides on and all i've done is added use some black paper to cut out a face and also two dangly legs so this is one but you don't have to make a sheep bookmark you could always make a wilbur bookmark oh, I love look that. at this one so i've done exactly the same thing just with pink paper and i've just added some ears and of course a lovely snout and then but who says you have to do a pig when you could do a tortoise or a turtle. Look at this one. How cool is that? Can I, um, talking of tortoise, yeah. can I introduce you to a tortoise friend? I think so. Would you like to go? Let's do a little swap. swap, swap. Right. Shorter cable now because I think the cable was the issue. All right then. So Greg is going to go and fetch. As well as the data. Um, a friend called Trixie. <gasps> um, Trixie, Trixie. You're going to go get Trixie. Trixie is an African leopard tortoise and he's very sweet. Uh, have you got have you got him? Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> Me and Trixie over. This is great because we actually wondered if Trixie would have gone on a bit of a wonder himself but how's it? He's here. What's your what's your legs Greg? What's Trixie eating? Uh, a bit of grass. A bit of grass. So actually Trixie can eat her body size worth of food every single day. So not body weight's worth, but imagine a big pile of grass the size of Trixie here. That's how much Trixie could eat in a day. What that else means do we know that, about Trixie? That means that I, if I was eating the same amount, would eat a Greg's body's worth of food a day. That doesn't sound weird quite, to me though. That sounds close, normal. It? It's yeah. quite close. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I love this. I, the thing that determines whether a tortoise is male or female is the temperature that the eggs are incubated at. So the temperature that the eggs are when they're growing. Mm -hmm. So uh, quite often in sand, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, it's the temperature. So if it's cooler, they turn out as to be male. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's uh, hotter, they turn out to be Female. Yeah, that temperature point is 31 degrees, so less than 31 degrees, and you've got male um, over 31, it's female. No teeth, right? Just got this amazing beak at the front here that uh, bites and tears through food and just kind of pulls it into the mouth. Yeah, but Trixie actually wasn't fed properly when uh, Trixie was younger, so actually has had to have a little, just a small little operation on her mouth to make sure say his well, mouth. Big tortoises mm -hmm. do not make good pets. No. Right? No. So. No. Absolutely. Um, and the last thing I think I want to tell you about mm -hmm. is something that's definitely worthy of a fact bomb. Ooh, great. Okay. So the way that tortoises store water. Yes, okay, yes. Is in anal sacs. There we are. They are basically bags of water near their bottom. Yeah. Here. So our, so water. Can I fact bomb that? Of course you can. If you can fact bomb and hold Trixie at the same time. Hang on. I love how Trixie is just here chewing on a bit of straw. Look at that. Amazing. Should I put Trixie back? So can I, yeah, you put Trixie back. So you might have heard of the big five. These are the big five African animals that you might see if you were on a safari. Um, and they are the lion, the leopard, the rhino, the water buffalo, and then the figures of them all, the elephant. So those are the big five. But did you know that there's also a little five? I didn't know this. Yes. I, this, I didn't know this. This is amazing. Yeah. 
and I guess the little five are inspired by the names of the big five. Yes. So we have, and one of them is the African leopard tortoise. We've also got the ant lion. We have the red-billed buffalo weaver. Yeah. And we've got the elephant shrew yes. and the rhino beetle. So there we go, that's all of them. You did that from memory. Why, well, yeah, it's well a cool done. fact. You know, I had no of, idea that there was a little cool five. Things. So there we are. So that was Trixie. Really nice to meet a reptile. Everything else we've met today is a mammal. But we're going to go on now to meet uh, our final our final friends. Um, I think these, they're very funny. Oh, yeah. They are very funny. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to introduce you to, uh, to two different uh, types of animals, actually. Uh, these ones, yeah, we thought those ones would go to the other side of the field. We're going to get to them very, very soon. They are, anyone know? They are llamas. Uh, but we first want to introduce you to this lot, Yay! the alpacas. And these are so cheeky and so fun. Um, shall we feed them, Mads? Are you ready to feed them? Yes. Do you want me to help you with this one? Uh, yeah. Do you want yeah. to feed them? Yeah, I'll feed them whilst you do camera. I'm going to keep an eye on the tech just All to make right. sure that we don't drop off again. So these, uh, these alpacas are grazers like sheep. So I've introduced you to those terms of browsers, where they eat at eye level, right? That was the goats. Or grazers, like the sheep, where they eat down at uh, floor level. These are also um, grazers, they eat at floor level, but they also do eat from your hand as well. Yeah. Look at them. Okay, I'm going to come in for a close up and introduce you to Stan, Stevie, Jamie, Finley, and Isabella. Hey. They are all boys. Hello, lads. So these are obviously very, very happy alpacas, but alpacas and llamas and camels as well actually Oops. they are actually known i'm going to put some on the floor for you there you go um they are known to spit now they don't like to spit they don't spit very often it's very rare farmer david had an experience once where one of the alpacas spat at him but it was very unfortunate <laughs> um oh i'm sorry there you go um but they don't like to spit because when they do they actually spit out the contents of their stomach mm. which is stomach acid and when they do it they don't like the taste of it so they tend to just let their mouth oh here we go Look off. you keep feeding them now these alpacas um alpacas are from south america and you don't find them in the wild we say they're domesticated and they're kept for hello that one's a llama. Uh, they're kept for their wool, for their fleece. And um, we're actually going to swing around this way yes. and show you some uh, alpaca fleece because alpaca fleece is three times warmer than sheep's fleece. Yeah. Do you want to show us it? Look at this. And it is, it's yeah. so amazingly, it looks like so, it's so mm -hmm. soft. It's absolutely wonderful. It's also waterproof. Yeah. Uh, it's also flame retardant, which means yeah. that it uh, stops fire. Fire. It won't. It won't set alight. Should we see if we can show it on the microscope? Oh, camera? let's be am even more ambitious. Why let's not, do it. Eh? Uh, so let me turn the microscope camera on. Okay. And let's see if we can bring up the microscope camera. Here we go. There we go. Look at that. So that is the white alpaca wool in close up. <laughs> My goodness, what are we like? Coming out and about, out of that live studio where we were for 50 live I shows know, this is, different. Uh, is, is bonkers, isn't it? All right, so should we feed them a little bit more? Uh, yes, we can do. Should we give them a little bit more food? Make sure they're nice and happy. Um, another thing about the alpacas is, uh, like, just like Wilbur actually, right? they always poo in the same place. Llama here, that's Greg, from Greg move by the way. I'm not a llama. You're not a llama. Llamas are much bigger than alpacas. Um, alpacas tend to be fluffier and cuter. Don't tell the llama that. Um, so yeah, they, they tend to be fluffy it's and true. llamas have longer banana-shaped ears. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the banana-shaped ears, larger in size, and the alpacas are fluffy and cute. Yeah. I think we've actually, we're almost at the end of today's show. Um, and because we're nearly at the end, we did tease right at the beginning of our first stream this morning that we are going to show you an adorable duckling. But that duckling is in need of a name. So we would like you to write in the live chat right now what you think this duckling should be called. Windy now. 
There we um, go. Let's try that. Oh, I reckon that's going to be better. Okay. So we were talking about retro video games and computers, and we showed you how to do some pixel arts. But we also had a couple of sort of like computing challenges for you to try. And we love love getting your emails. So why don't we see some of those right away? Alrighty. Um, first up, we have Mia and Sky. Here they are. So here is Mia and Sky. Really enjoyed doing our exact instructions coding activity. Uh, here's Mia with a peanut butter sandwich, and Sky with uh, the chocolate spread wrap. And they definitely thought, like us, that it's more fun when you get it wrong. <laughs> uh, all right, picture number two is George and Charlton. Uh, they also had a go at the exact instructions challenge and Charlton won. Third pick. Here is Ruben and Kelty. They were inspired to play some retro computer games after watching last week's show. Uh, and they also made some pixel art as well. Ruben designed um, a builder from the Age of Empires and Kelty created a blocker from Lemmings. Uh, uh, next we have Ethan and Amelia. Uh, they've been making their own pixel art and they even designed their characters using an app on their tablet before they put it onto paper, which is a great and was brilliant to do that as well. Use some actual technology. Here's Ruby and Finn uh, with their awkward selfie and pixel art. Ruby's is a flower and Finn made R2-D2. Oh, cool. We have Seisha and Vinny. Now, actually, they, um, they went on a little tech safari and then with their grown-ups, they were allowed and they had permission to actually take a look inside some technical devices. Of course, it's really important that you would not do this without a grown up and um, don't go, don't touch electrical items, but really great way to learn what's inside computers. This is Kirsty with her pixel art. It's a cheetah. Kirsty and her sister Jessie have watched every episode of Let's Go Live. That must be 50. Oh. Wow. Well, wow. this is at least five episodes at the moment. <laughs> um, and here we have Hester and Chip. They've been designing their own pixel art as well. Um, Hester designed a flower and a rabbit and Chip made a pattern design. And actually, their parents worked at a video games company in London 13 years ago. Cool. And that's how they met. Uh, this is Mercia from China designed a My Little Pony pixel art. That's a really good one. And, and then last, last but, but not, not least, least <laughs> we have Thomas. He really enjoyed the show on Saturday and he designed his own characters, a troll and a dragon. And we're back and there the we camera go. is on the tripod and we have better sound. Yes! Right. So, Shall we get the duckling? Yes, the names are coming in. I've seen quite a few for, du for Ducky McDuck face. Oh, amazing. <laughs> uh, right, let's go through a bunch of names. Oh gosh, there are so many coming in. You lot are absolute legends. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so let's have a look. Um, Sarah says Milo the duckling. Pippa says Splosh the duckling. Um, we have got, they're so good. Uh, Adam and Ben suggest Quack Quack. Awesome. Oh, Emily says, yes, the duckling should be called Data as this an one. ode to this episode. Oh my goodness. All right, sweetheart. Oh, it's obviously going to be a little bit like, I've just been taken out of my home, but it is an absolute adorable look at it. There we oh, go. Oh, it's so calm now. Here we go, this little duckling. I'm going to keep doing some names as you go. Um, Amanda says the duckling should be called Persistence. Persistence, Because yes. of today's episode. Uh, Elizabeth and Sammy wants to call it Hope. Hope. Oh, that's lovely as well. So we've got so many coming in. What do you in. think? What do you reckon? How uh, nice should we do? We've got Pardos. Pard Quite a few for oh, Rona. Oh, that's Westerling, that one. <laughs> uh, Evie. Rona. What you look like. I'm going to uh, put her down for a Quack. Second. Dave. Rainbow is a suggestion as well. Zach the Quack. Good suggestion there as well. Right, okay. Oh. <laughs> Henry says, Techie the Duck in honour of uh, our perseverance today. You've also used the word perseverance. So, shall we choose a top three, Maddie? Yeah, I'm coming back. Here we okay, go. Okay, we're coming back. Duck the, little, the little duckling needed to go to the toilet. <laughs> but it's fine. Oh, that's such a shame. That was so close to being on you. We will, um, we will, I will, we will wash our hands a by, lot. By the way, this llama here is... Um, Farmer Dave, can we swing round that oh, way a bit? I'll oh, I'll just do that. Oh, yeah. There perfect. you go. Let's, let's end the show with a llama in shot. Um, so we're going to choose. What are yeah. your top three from all of those? So I I do like... So there was... I, I, what stuck out for me, um, they're also good. Data, yeah. perseverance and hope. Yeah, very nice. this episode. Yeah. Uh, quack, quack, I kind of loved, and splosh because of the sound effects of them. Yes, I like that as well. Oh, it's so difficult. Shall we ask Farmer Dave? Zach the Quack, that was a good one. Dicky the Duck. Go on then, Farmer I, David. I think perseverance. I think Percy. Perseverance. Percy! Perfect. 
Did we you hear have, that? Uh, the name. It's yeah. going to be Percy for Perseverance. Yes. Thanks to uh, us persevering with this episode. So and well done to those of you who suggest that also, one. That's such I'm going to bring this back a little bit so we're closer to the microphone. There we go. We've still got a llama button shot. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't want any. We wouldn't end this in any other way. Um, so Percy Perseverance. Love that. Thank you so much for sticking with us. And um, a couple more thank yous, of course, to Farmer David and everybody here at South Angle Farm Park. Um, I'm so sorry we haven't been able to just make this a, a clean <laughs> episode because this place is wonderful and um, you can book to come and visit at the moment and please do we love it here and you can meet all the animals in real life if, all if, if, the, you're um, if you notice we've now got the ducks behind us as well the two peakings have come to join us oh my gosh this is so wonderful uh, all the information about this place in the video description below and um, if you take any uh, pictures you go on any out and about adventures yourself this week um, this is our email address send us a photo uh, if you want it to possibly be in the show and if you make any of those bookmarks yes if you make a farmyard bookmark there are links in this in the description where you'll very clearly be able to see how to make one we'd love to see it if you make any of those as well and thank you to our patrons yes because without our patrons we wouldn't be able to continue doing these out and about saturday morning shows yes right. we're gonna have to rethink our tech situation i think we That's may fine. have hit full ambition um <laughs> and but biggest thank you always is to each and every one of you yeah. whether you're watching live or whether you're watching back yeah. uh, thank you so so much it means yeah. the world to us all right then so with that in mind we are very much looking forward to seeing you we hope next saturday at 10 a.m um, and maybe you should prepare the horses and um, get the armor out oh. what else power up the trebuchet because we are going on a journey back in time for a medieval celebration at a car Awesome. Yeah, we are. It's Woo. going to be so, so good. Right now, we're going to go around and say hello to our new friends again. We are, we are. And we're going to make sure that Percy gets back to uh, Percy's mother, <laughs> mo mother duck. Um, oh, it's so cute. Yeah. It's got a name. I know. And, that we, and that you lot came up with it. Oh, yeah. super cool. All right. Uh, we will see you next week, Saturday, <laughs> 10 o'clock. Say the words. Stay curious. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.